Let's take a look at that controller. If you can remove any of the panels to see where these wirings go, as you can see here on this picture, here we have, you know, zones or stations one, two, three, four, five, and six. You have your AC power. So this is all important information to get familiar with when it comes to uh, sprinkler timers. So these are standard irrigation controllers. Um, some of the standard features we're going to see out there are date and time, start times, run times, the watering days. Are, does it have a seasonal adjust? What does that mean? Programs. What are programs used for? Uh, what can these uh, these things help me in programming my controller? So it's very important to look at um, at your controller and get to know them as best as possible. If you don't have the manual, a lot of these manufacturers have those manuals uh, online as PDFs. So I'd recommend you to go online and download them, make a copy, put them in the box, keep them with you, and uh, that way you can learn that controller a lot better. So when it comes to irrigation controllers, it's just a simple little computer, little operating system that controls when those sprinklers come on, how long they water for, how many days they come on for, start times. Um, it turns on a specific irrigation valve or station at a specific time for a specific length of time. So what, what can controllers do? They can they eliminate the need to water by hand. You know, I love watering by hand, though. If you can water by hand, great. But if you can't, this is what a controller can do. They can operate your irrigation system. They conduct, they conduct complex watering schedules set by you, right, the manager. They can potentially save you water, money, and they can potentially save you water. But the most important thing is they, you know, if you manage them properly, they can efficiently put that water out there when needed. What can't most controllers do? They can adjust your irrigation timer and account for daily or weekly weather patterns. But once again, this is a standard timer. They can't turn off them. They can't turn themselves off when it rains. Maybe yes or no. Um, they can't tell when you're uh, what you're watering. Uh, they can't adjust themselves, and that's just for standard timers. But what, I want to show you. I'm going to go back really quick because that second part that says they can't turn themselves off when it rains. Most um, a lot of these standard controllers, if you open up the face, most you will see on some of them that have this little rain sensor and this little relay switch. By you taking off this relay switch and buying a simple two wire rain sensor, you could plug them into these relays, put that sensor out where it'll get rainfall, and these controllers will shut off for a certain duration based on that type of rain sensor that you put on there. So that's just food for thought for later on. Okay, let's get to here. Ooh. So one thing I want you to also get familiar with is these is the controller valve wiring. Now, that's something that's very important when it comes to controllers. You know you, that you might not be aware. So take a look at those wiring. And one thing that a lot of manufacturers have done for us to make it easier is most residential systems have these color coded wires that have um, that are labeled to each individual station. So you can see here by this controller, this controller here has three stations on it, and they're blue, green, and purple on the wiring. So what I want, what I did was I labeled to where each of these uh, these wiring goes to. So you can see here that station number one is right here, and these in each of these valves has you know, two wires coming off what's called off of the solenoid. So you can see here the control wire is hooked up to one there. Valve number two, you have the green control wire hooked up to one of the wires there. And this other station here with the purple uh, line hooked up to this station or this valve here. What they all share in common is this white wire here, which is called the common wire. Now, that extra wire that's left out from that solenoid, they all get looped in. And that's how this controller communicates with these valves. So when station number one triggers on by this controller saying the signal, this is this station triggers on here, this number one, and then the water goes out to that part of the landscape. And then once this one is done, the next one will come on in sequence and so forth. So when that first start time begins, it'll start off with one and then move on to the other stations if that is what you have in your system. Okay, so here we go for the next station. 
And this is a reminder, I am going to be sending this slide presentation to everybody so you can always have this to refer to. So what's the goals of ultimately programming your, your, uh, your irrigation controller or managing it properly? The ultimate goal is just once again to use that water efficiently to put a lot less time and effort into um, going out there back and forth and reducing your, your water waste. So common controller instructions, date and time. So we're gonna be looking at all these different things. So when it comes to programming our controllers, so make sure that the date and time is noted on the controller. Make sure that's up to date. Sometimes the power goes out. So one thing also is make sure those batteries, if it requires a battery backup, make sure to uh, have that controller battery um, you know, replace it every 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 year to make sure that it's backing up that information and make sure that the date and time is set properly learn like i said not everybody has the same controller this controller here is a very simple old controller but has very pertinent information that is very common to most controllers so make sure you move those dials to the date and time and have that set appropriately now programs some i believe a question came in earlier about programs now on most controllers, not all, you will have, uh, you will see where it has a feature where it has programs. So here on this controller, you'll see this little button that says ABC and that's for program A, B and C. Um, what is the benefit of, of having programs? Uh, programs are very important to start breaking up your landscapes into different areas. For instance, grass requires more frequency of watering. So it's important to um, have that grass on a different program uh, compared to, let's say, a planter material that requires a, a whole different frequency of watering. So let's see here. Let's let's get into some another next slide to show you what I mean about the use of programs. So this here is our IRWD recommended irrigation schedule. So as you can see here, turf grass. If you look at the days or frequency, let's look at July. Well, let's look at August since we're in August. So grass, we're gonna be watering. It's recommended here to water four days, three cycles or three start times of three minutes where drought tolerant plant material, it's saying two days, three cycles of four minutes. If you have all your planter areas and your grass on one program, you're basically gonna be watering your planters more than what is needed because you're gonna be watering. You always wanna to water to the highest water use plant, which used typically is our grasses. So if you're watering your grass every single day or five days or six days out of the week, those planters are also gonna be getting the same five days or six days out of the week of watering when in actuality, they don't require so much watering or so many days of watering. So that's why it's important to start breaking up those different plant material types into different programs. Now, this is not a scheduling class, but hopefully I'm gonna be having a scheduling class um, a little bit uh, later on in the year where we could take a look at uh, and creating schedules, the importance of really making note of this on a spiral notebook, a piece of paper, and noting what's watering and when, so we can start using these programs to what is needed. Frequency of watering. This is very important. So the frequency of watering, how many days of the week do I need to watering? You know, am I, am I gonna be watering one day, two day, three days, four days, five days? So which days am I watering? So it's important to note, note what days of watering and you can always refer to your scheduling on how many days per week you need to water. So learn those features, it's very important. Cycle starts. So cycles basically refers to start times. It's really important to consider, you know, how many starts as we talked about earlier about about breaking up those those minutes of irrigation. Once again, the best time to irrigate is early morning hours. Um, you can see here by the if I need to water for six minutes, it's better to have three start times for two minute run times and have about a good 30 minute uh, break in between each of those cycles. 
Hopefully that does make sense. So cycle start times is important. So let's see, if I were to set up a, a schedule, let's say I needed to water my grass and it's telling me to water four days. So select your four days. And if I need to water that grass for um, six minutes, then I'm gonna have those, those stations set to three minutes, the, those stations that water grass and have two start times. So maybe I'll start watering at five in the morning and then have my next start time at six in the morning or 5.30. You always wanna keep yourself that, that little bit of gap to allow the water to permeate that soil. So it's really important to look at those cycle start times. The duration is also important. You know, duration is basically your run times. How long do I need to water? And you can always, once again, refer to your schedules on those watering durations. The seasonal adjust. Now, this is a great feature to look for on your standard controllers. As you can see here, sometimes it will say seasonal adjust, water budget, or have this nice little percentage symbol. And that's a quick and easy way to to program your controllers. If you do have this seasonal adjust feature, most controllers on their um, on their manuals will have a page dedicated to the seasonal adjust, and they tell and most and most of them tell you, okay, so we want you to program this controller for summer run times. So you're gonna water. You're gonna program this controller for the peak month, which is typically July. So you're gonna look at July or August, I know August, I would select August, here it is right here and say, you know what? I'm gonna program my controller for August, even if it's January or February. And once you have this controller set up for peak run times, then you simply go to this water budget or this little seasonal adjust. And it's basically, you're, all you're doing is reducing that percentage and you start to reduce it by percentage. So, Let's go back really quick and look at the schedule here. So you program it for August, but then you let's say it is January and it's saying you're here to have your controller set at 30%. That's once again recommended. You might have your controller all completely off in January because you might have great rain. So it's one of those things to where you can use that seasonal adjust to adjust your watering um, for each month just by changing up that percentage, which is really great. Once again, this is a feature that your controller might have and or might not have, but it's one of those things to look at and look at your manuals, look at your, your controllers. And uh, you're gonna have to make sure to read it and make the adjustments. For instance, this controller here, when you do set it to that water budget, when you do change the water budget, you are gonna have to eliminate some of those dates per week. So there is some um, some other adjustments that these controllers take, but most of those other functions are very simple and very common um, features that most controllers have. 